What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Do you guys have a bunch of helium or low Rowan miners just sitting around? I know I got two helium devices right there with an aware element. They're already repurposed for different projects. And today I want to show you guys Crank, which is a low Rowan competitor. They have a lot coming your way in 2023. And I want to show you guys everything that I know about them. There's going to be a lot of videos on Crank on my channel, I have a feeling, in the near future. So stay tuned for those. Feel free to subscribe, drop a like, and join my Discord server. But let's start talking about Crank. So there's going to be two Medium articles that I'm going to put in the description below if you guys want to read them on your own time. This is one of them. The other one is here. And these Medium articles are actually published by the CEO, Al Fizo. I hope I'm saying that right. But... These are really great articles that give you guys basically a whole rundown on the company. I'm going to go over these briefly, but like I said, they will be in the description so you guys can check them out, as well as this video by Action Crypto. I got to say, Action Crypto, you knocked it out of the park on this video. This is a really good video, and I watched all 20 minutes of it. It gives a really good breakdown of the Crank Network, everything that they're planning on doing, what Hotspots are going to be supported. Look at this. They're going to support the SenseCap, the Pisces, Heltic, Cotex, uh, or Cotex, Rack V2, Minted, Panther X1 and X2, and more. They're constantly adding more. They just added support for the Match X M2 Pro, which is huge because the Match X M2 Pro isn't really doing anything anymore. So the first announcement gives everybody an overview of their project. Their paramount objective is to maintain the highest level of transparency in our operations. That's a big thing that we haven't seen in a lot of companies, surprisingly. As such, we are dedicated to keeping you informed on our ongoing targets and team responsible for their execution. Over the past quarter, they've been doing a lot of effort into their mobile application, a dashboard, an explorer, an internal DEX, a staking platform, and integration of various LoRa gateways. I personally have so much LoRa equipment. I have antennas. I have really long Ethernet cords. I have a, a bunch of Helium hotspots that I haven't been able to use or it just hasn't been worth it to me to use because the Helium network is not doing well. And I really do not like Solana, the network. I do not like that at all. Something that really caught my attention is that Crank is being built on Kadena. They're not focusing on building their own blockchain, which I think was a huge problem for Helium was because they had to focus on maintaining their blockchain as well as maintaining their whole ecosystem. Crank just has to worry about the ecosystem Kadena is going to handle the heavy load of maintaining their blockchain data. And then this is just an overview of everybody in their team. It has their Discord username and their title, and it tells you guys what is going on, what they are doing, what they are providing for the Crank team, which is great. There's a beta group that is going to be launching at the end of the month, and there is going to be a possible an affiliate link, so you guys might be able to get a discount, which is great for you guys. But I will inform you guys one that actually goes live. It should be going live when the beta group goes live at the end of the month. But it's going to cost $150 to buy a license. And they reserve the right to adjust based on demand. With Helium, if you guys didn't follow Helium, they had a flat cost to buy a license for these manufacturers. And they did not change it at all, regardless of demand. So when Helium was booming, it was great for these manufacturers. They didn't really care. But right now, Helium is like not selling any hotspots. Any of these manufacturers are not selling hotspots and they still have to pay that flat onboarding fee. So the ability for them to adjust this on demand is just another benefit of switching to crank. So the beta group will start receiving licenses in March and it is limited right now to 2000 devices. But look at all of the devices that they support. They support the SenseCap M1, the Pisces, Heltec, Cotex, Rack V2, Minted Panther X1, Dragino, Controlio, Controlino, Milesite, Broen, Mary, IoT, Number OG, and Number RockPi. And like I said, they're adding more in their Discord. You guys can see when they're adding new devices supported. First off is the tokenomics reward structure, which is talking about how they think the reward structure is due for a change, but they can't change the fundamentals of the crank token. They feel that the reward structure should be updated. Now, they didn't include a lot of information on this section in particular. They said we have great and unique plans for the community's review, but the vote isn't quite ready yet. So that's awesome that they're being transparent, that they have plans to change it, but they really don't want to announce it just yet because it's not quite perfect. Some other people, some other companies 
might launch something without testing it first. And we've seen that with previous lower rent projects. They're also talking about their server and infrastructure scaling. It is a two pronged strategy. They're scaled laterally for the expected higher load and number of connected devices and at the same time introduce geographical load balancing, enabling end devices to connect to the nearest server resources. There's also an internal DEX that they are working on. InCrank is a decentralized exchange platform and maintained by the Crank team within the ecosystem of Kadena Blockchain Network. It's going to allow you guys to trade your Crank token, CRKK, to and from other blockchain exchanges. It's going to allow you guys to exchange your Crank tokens securely, privately, faster, and it eliminates the need to move assets to and from other blockchains and exchanges. That's awesome. You don't have to worry about an exchange collapsing and you losing all your tokens. That's another great thing about decentralized exchanges. They also have a staking mechanism, which will require every gateway to stake a fixed amount of tokens in order to function as a proof of network participation node or consensus node. Subsequently, staking is expected to not only result in token deflation and project reliability, but will also serve as an initial step for participating in the future governance mechanism, which they are going to talk about. The mobile app, they're still working on it. I don't think the mobile app is released just yet. There's a new dashboard, which the dashboard is beautiful. If you guys have a sense cap dashboard, if you know what that looks like, it's only limited to sense cap. Crank wants to have that open to everybody that has a crank device. So you'll be able to see all the same data on any type of device you have connected to the crank network, which is just, it's beautiful. They're also working on an explorer, which is going to be using a heat map. It will allow them to visualize both gateway density as well as the relative differences between locations, statistics about the number of gateways online, offline. It will feature the ability to search for a gateway by name and see the recent activity for a selected gateway. We've seen explorers in the past. I'm interested to see what their special take on their explorer is going to be. And for quarter two of 2023, they put their goals. They're planning to have a dev diary. They want to focus on gamification of the network, strategic attempt to enhance the network by creating similar experiences to those when playing games in order to motivate and engage users, which is great, rather than just setting it up and leaving it and forgetting about it. They're planning to onboard everything in quarter two. They're planning to add sensors, a ranking system, more hardware is going to be allowed, and there's going to be a rewards boost. So in order to reach this 3% granted benefits, you need to add, add at least five sensors. Also, if you add a GPS antenna to your miner, your earnings will improve by 1%. That's great. And they also have their plans for quarter three and quarter four. You guys can read them right here. But that's all it is for the first article. The second one talks about more of the critical design and how Crank is going to work, what their plans are to be better and different from their competitors. They talk about an initial ranking solution, and basically it's going to prevent people from moving their hotspots to a new location just because it has better earnings. I'm currently honestly doing this right now on the Helium network, not by choice, but kind of by accident because I have my Helium hotspot asserted 50 miles away from where it actually is, and it has a 1.0 transmit scale, so I'm earning better rewards than I would if I had it in my actual location. They have plans to not allow that to happen. If I move my hotspot from, let's say, my house to this new location because it has a better transmit scale just for the sake of this argument, it wouldn't be automatically given the best earnings out of the area because there's other hotspots already in that area that already have an established network that are providing to the crank infrastructure. And this is describing all of what I just said. So it's going to have a list of gateways with data when they joined later, when and when they relocated. And it's going to look at each packet of unique communication and assign one point to the one that established coverage in the area first. So if you're first in the area, you're going to be getting uh, this one point. And then it's going to find the second one and assign half a point, find the third one and assign one third of a point. This much redundancy should be enough. So don't assign points to any consecutive receivers. And it will calculate a percentage of total points assigned over total packets. There's going to be no hexagons that we've seen with Helium. It is location only based ranking scale. A gateway in a certain area covered by other gateways, but receiving traffic from a direction that is blocked for the other gateways in the area could still be a very useful participant. The ranking should be based on the accumulation sum of each piece of traffic. Radio communication is chaotic in a sense that it can bounce and reflect and everything else. You need the total of statistics to establish any kind of usefulness scale, location, hexagons, restricting the proof of coverage packets just won't come close enough to being sufficient. 
And this is my favorite part about the network is their attempts to prevent the gaming that has happened with other networks, in particular Helium. Um, establishing a farm of many devices in a warehouse and either giving them the same split antenna or just leaving them with a small antenna receiving traffic from the enclosed area himself, essentially just farming Helium in, in a huge warehouse or whatever with a whole bunch of devices right next to each other. This should, in any case, result in many duplicates being received, which I talked about up here and thereby would count mostly as a single device. Declaring that the device is somewhere else since the location is not an immediate factor in the scale should not be a major factor. When it comes to moving your device to a new location where others have already established themselves and potentially causing a negative effect on their earnings, it should be easily detectable when your usual witnesses have changed completely. This should cause a reset of the seniority rank of the device being moved. So like I said earlier, how you had the one point if you establish it first at your home base, if you moved it to another place and someone already had that one point, your one point is not valid anymore. You're going to be put at the bottom of the rankings. We also talk about duplicating a device with the same ID and how they plan to counter that. Changing the unique ID, this should cause the device to not be operable or at least not capable of receiving any rewards. A stolen device, changing a wallet assigned to an existing unique ID requires a one-time password to be reassigned. Additionally, they talk about channeling low route traffic from somewhere else and what they need to do with that, as well as generating traffic. For generating traffic, it requires the most sophistication and they will have to see what people come up with to say something about catching these. They're actually relying on the crank team and the community to come up with a solution for that, which is awesome. In my opinion, it seems that projects that include their community in important decisions like this go way further than projects that are so closed off and think they know what's best for that environment. And that is it for the second Medium article. Closing words for now, all above is an attempt to solicit feedback and opinions. Even though a scale can be calculated this way, for now it doesn't have an impact on rewards calculation. The plan would be to start using it in the near future to cause a 10% variation in rewards. Then as more feedback and more fine tuning is achieved, increase the impact to 20% and so on. So everything that I just talked about in this article is not going to be just what bam thrown into the network is going to be slowly implemented so it's not a zero to 100 like helium did many many times and it caused the network to just pretty much come to a screeching halt it's going to be a slow implementation i i'm really becoming a fan of the crank network the more i'm looking into it and as for the website this will also be in the description below they have their own miner that they are making so if you guys don't have a helium hotspot that you're available to just convert or anything like that, when the opportunity comes up, you can buy this crank hotspot miner, which you can select the region. And there is uh, Australia, Europe, and North America. They already have the frequency set. There's an outdoor miner set to release soon. And you can buy the in indoor miner for $4.99 plus $20 shipping. And the wait time is great. It's only 21 days. So you don't have to worry about waiting six months like we had to do with helium and just wrapping up their discord server is a great place to find out the newest information on this project i will be tweeting about this project a lot as well if you guys are interested feel free to follow me on twitter but you can see they posted this video by action crypto which i just talked about in the beginning of this video they have some exciting news they're constantly announcing and the coolest announcement in the recent days that they made is the ability to add the MatchX m2 pro to their network it's only going to cost $150. And if you're interested in participating in the beta program and testing your Match XM2, please keep an eye on our social channels. The beta group waitlist will open at the end of March. We're looking forward to seeing what our users will accomplish with their M2s and let's resurrect them and give them a second life, which is just great. A project that is helping repurpose hardware that otherwise honestly would have ended up in the recycling bin once their canister is run out. It's really good and Crank is really doing some good stuff for the crypto space but that's all i got for this video if you guys are interested in crank i will have the discord their website the medium articles as well as action crypto's great video on crank in the description below so you guys can check those out feel free to join my discord server so you guys can talk to me about this as well as if you have any questions you can comment in the comment section below i will do my best to either answer it or redirect you to someone who can answer it thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you all in the next video peace out